<laughs> I was so excited about uh, Verified. I'm sitting here like I don't have a thing to do. Uh, <laughs> praise God. Well, happy Sunday to you. Um, let's see here. Um, I wanted to reiterate uh, the fact that you can evangelize right now. Um, if you have not hit that share button, go ahead and do that right now. Um, some of you have the service up on, or the celebration or this experience up on your flat screens. So your phones are free. <clears throat> Uh, when I mean available for you to just go ahead and share. What would it mean to you for someone to care for you so much that they sent you this link to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? And that's what you have to consider. And I want you all to take advantage of, of moments, approach every moment like it owes you something, like, I'm not just talking about this. I'm not just saying this because this is what people say all the time. I have an interest in mind. I have a vision in mind. Uh, there's something behind what, why I'm asking you this. Your, your sharing it may mean the difference between life and death. Okay, forget about that. Heaven and hell. You follow what I'm saying to you? So if, if you'll just take this moment and, and love up on someone, agape someone, share with them this, this meeting on, on today, okay? Um, wow. <clears throat> you ready to give? Let's, let's give. Um, I was, I was just thinking about what Dr. Didi was saying uh, earlier in my sewing that, uh, that Harley Davidson. You know, that, that's the second one I've given away. This is, this is big boy stuff. This is, this, is, this, is, this is stepping out of yourself. You know, as I mature in the things of God, <clears throat> My values change. Your, your, your values uh, will demonstrate or display or convey a lot about what's going on in you, what, what you prioritize. The objective there with respect to this seed was to catapult, exalt, bring others up, level them up to another place in life because there have been some financial diseases or diseases, some inconveniences with respect to what people are encountering. And my heart, my objective was to uh, use something that I had to lighten the load of others. You know, some people are so possessive of things. God, and, and I got to tell you, once upon a time, I wanted what I wanted to, in, to have more of it <clears throat> somewhat seemingly substantiated where I stood as it relates to the success in life. You are not really successful in life until you can secure someone else's success. This, this, the success that, that I, 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 I really kind of get uh, excited about is others and to know I've had some hand in it. You know, when you want to raise the quality or the productivity of others around you, even at the expense sometimes when it may seem like you're giving more of you then they may want to give for themselves. But there's a maturity that exists on the inside of that that I'm, I'm so enamored about. I'm, 
I, I'm so loving. I'm, I'm, it's so delightful to, to walk in something where you know a seed that you have given into or given of created something more for someone else. But, but, but get a hold of this now. Get, get a hold of this because when you understand systemic righteousness, there's never been a time when you have given of yourself for others where God will not give back unto you 100 fold. And I don't, I don't know why people don't see this, but I'm going higher with the heart that I have in giving to others. And, and, and while you're after trying to get stuff for you, God says, the minute you make something happen for someone, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. No, no, the minute, but, but you got to grow up into this. You, you, don't, you don't get, some people want to look better and have more than others. And that's what substantiates their, their sometimes spiritual posterity and, and position in life. You, you know, they, they, they'll never give of something of themselves because their identity is attached to their stuff. So, so the more stuff that they lose or give away, it, it reduces them. I know the more stuff that you can give, the greater you increase yourself. I mean, it, it's, it's astonishing. And, and you won't know like I'm talking to you until you'll, you'll sit there and keep thinking I'm trying to get something from you. I'm in the child of God, I'm not trying to get a thing from you. I'm trying to get something to you. And, and I've, I've, I've found the answer to this thing, man. It is no secret what God can do. There's no shadow he won't light up, no mountain he won't climb up to make sure every last one of my needs are met. Was that last week's song? That was last week's song, yeah. This week is like he's going to open up rivers and, and, and cut through highways. What's that song you always singing? That, 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 that opening up uh, highways, opening up rivers, seas. What's that? Give me the words. He'll split a sea so I can walk. Ooh, glory. He'll split sea so. No, no, he will. No, I'm talking about. No, no, I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about for me. He'll split. Listen, my main man, Jehovah. Jehovah, Jah, he'll split a sea for me. He'll split a sea so I. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. He'll, he'll split. He'll split a seed so I can walk right through. What's the other part to that? My fears of losing anything that I apply or comply with as it relates to his word, the fear of that. See, see some people don't give because you are fearful. You are fearful, F-U-L-L, -L, full of fear. You're full of fear, and almost not even thinking that this doesn't work or this isn't going. I am so faithful, F-U-L-L, -L, of this whole systemic righteousness where there's never been a time. I mean, I tell you, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot get it. No, it's, it's like the more I give, it was my desire to, to acquire, just save up a million dollars last year, did it. It was my desire to do the same thing this year, did it. It's done, I'm about $90,000 away from just saving it. I mean, I'm talking about giving. I'm talking about in the bank. I ain't, I ain't, talking, about, I ain't talking about faith confession. No, no, see, and the only reason why, don't, don't get me upset here, the only reason why I'm telling you all this because you need somebody to escort you. I don't have to tell you my business. I don't have to tell you. The only reason why I'm telling this because you need somebody that's a contemporary. All this stuff is just stuff to you. It's just talk. It's church stuff. I ain't talking about church stuff. It's, I'm talking about stuff I'm living out now, right now. And it's because of my seed. It's because of my heart as it relates to the word of God and giving. 
Give, and it shall be given back unto you. And the good man, and some of you all been watching for weeks, and we've been pouring out to you, and you haven't sown the dime yet. Well, stay broke. Stay broke, because I, I ain't begging you for nothing. All I can do, okay. All right, calm down. <laughs> that, that was northwest right there, southeast one of them, that southern eastern part of D.C. No, no, that's not even in my nature, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to beg you. I, I'm just going to, I'm going to show you. you. You remember in school, show and tell? You, you just, you, you could sh I could show you better than I can tell you. And you can sit idly by. Join me this upcoming month um, in reading um, a, a, a proverb every day. Just this October, 31 days. I'm, I'm going to read a proverb. That's what I was led to do. You can join me. That's what I was led to do. If you don't join me in giving, join me in this because it ain't going to cost you anything. It may cause you something because I approach every moment like it owes me something. And when I think in terms of, oh, I think in terms of pay. And when I think of, in terms of pay, I, you got to think, oh, pay what? Well, when you approach every moment like you owe, owe, it owes you something, the only thing you have to do is pay attention. And if you're paying attention right now, see, your now is your next. Your, 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 your now is your next. And you... You may not understand, but your, your now is your, come on, get closer up here so, so I can look them in the eyes. <clears throat> your, your right now is literally defining your next. And whatever you're doing in your now is going to define your next. I've paid attention enough to know that this is how this thing works. It's a law. Okay, Genesis, okay, I don't have time. Yeah, I do. I got a little time. Genesis 8.22. Genesis 8.22. Let me, let me show you this. Woo, I got time. I got time. Praise God. Uh, Timmy, the Faith City Music didn't sing forever today. Thank God Derek Millard is gone. He was singing all the time, just so long, OMG. <laughs> Derek, I am just playing with you. Lord knows he's going to hear this, but that's my guy. I love him. Oh, sometimes you don't miss your water until you're well run dry, boy. Yeah, and uh, that boy has some water. There have been so many people here in this ministry that have taught me so many things. Derek Millard is one of them, and I appreciate his tenure here. My prayer is that he just continues to excel, you know. Wow. And then he didn't forget about his, uh, his old man. I'm an OG now, so he... I mean, he, he'll, just, he'll just reach back and, and sow a seed. And I ain't talking about much. So it's, you all know you're going to take care of me in my old age, right? Amen. I say, y'all do know <laughs> you're going to take care of me. That's what I did with Oral Roberts. Did they not? We would sow a seed into Brother Oral Roberts' life every single month. That's what I do with Dr. Frederick Casey Price. And thank you, pastors, who are hearing that, making it your business to sow into your man of God. A monthly, you need to do that. That's what I do. See, you can, you can watch my life and not know the ingredients to my success. And again, I'm not asking you for a single dime. Ain't, no, ain't, nobody, ain't nobody studying you with that. He just trying to get some money. Oh, strawberry patch. What's strawberry patch? It's the sweetest thing I can think about saying to you. Yeah, no, no one's even thinking about that. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get you, I'm trying to get you to another place. And I'm just saying, if it's 50 cent, you have stepped into a system. That's all I'm saying. If it's a thank you note, somebody send me a thank you note. And it just, I mean, it just, it, it, it took me to, into another stratosphere. But now know this, I got to tell you this, Whatsoever man sows, that's what he's going to reap. So the thank you bless me. But will you want a bunch of thank yous in your old age? I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to help, man. I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm not trying to get anything from you. 
but the thank yous work. That was the first thing I said when I came out of the coma, wasn't it, Dr. D? Where you going? Why you walking into me? <laughs> get, get the camera over there. No, no, don't do that. Um, um, first thing I said when I came out of the coma, thank you, Jesus. That's the first thing when them 10 lepers got healed, said that one. He said, wasn't it nine? It was 11 of us on that machine. Thank God for my niece, Dr. Kia Wooten. She, she highly recommended. They got me out of the play the hospital. I, 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 I promise you, they, they tapped out. I, I, was, I was on the verge of dying in that place. And uh, my beautiful niece, uh, Pastor Rick and Karen's daughter, uh, along with Dr. Sophia, they got together a medical team here. And the medical team wanted me to let you know, you, it's, no, it's not a lack of faith to put your mask on. Put your mask on. What, what, what do you think I, I got on glasses? These glasses ain't no different from a mask. You understand? I, I, wouldn't, I can see you better while I'm believing God. And I promise you, I got a lot of apps open. Y'all make me remember what I was talking about. I was talking about Kia. I was talking about something else before that. Now I'm on the glasses. Y'all help, help a brother out. Uh, what was I talking about? The glasses. Why are you look, Arisa looking at me like, I have no idea. You talking about so many things. Okay, I'm going to get to it. But, but the glasses, yeah, it's just like the mask. I'm, 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 I'm preserving or establishing a quality of life while I'm believing God. So you put your mask on, even when we return here. If we have to wear a mask for a while. Where I, I've traveled uh, this year. I'm going back to Detroit uh, sometime this month. I don't know why the pastor wants me to come when we can do it like this. Praise the Lord, but I'm going. But we wore masks. We went, walked into, and everybody's sitting there. And we went into Word of Faith, Keith Butler's ministry. Everybody in there, we all have faith. But we got wisdom, too. And if there's something going around, I don't want to get nothing from y'all. And so Kia, Kia got me out of there. But my point is, guess what? Guess what? Get, get, get a hold of this. Get a hold of this. Y'all supposed to say what? Oh, you said Okay. Okay, do it. Let's start over. Guess what? <laughs> I was so into Kia Wooten every single month while she was in med school. Oh, y'all put it together, would you please? I'm, I'm just sending her, and it wasn't much. much. It was 100 to $300 sometimes. 300 was like, we're over the top. You're really doing good. Even when she was in Hood College, I remember, I can't remember where she went to med school. Was that at Hood too? Yeah, yeah, she went somewhere, but, but, but at, her undergrad was at Hood College and, and Dr. D. Just imagine that seed. Oh, Lord. See, you don't know that this moment is specifically designed for another moment, but you don't know about this moment. But God knows about this moment. So he'll have you to sow now so you'll be covered later. And if you think this is a game, then keep on, keep on thinking. But Dr. going to school, Dr. D just told me about her going to school. We would give into the scholarship fund every single month $1,500. Our kids, that was, that, it wasn't even 1,500. It wasn't even every month. That was a lie. You should have corrected me. It was every fifth Sunday. Every fifth Sunday, Dede and I would give something. It wasn't always 1,500. It was something. And our kids were never qualified. They were disqualified to ever uh, get uh, a scholarship money. Well, that wouldn't look right, right? It wouldn't look right if, in fact, did you all share yet? Okay, share. Make sure you share. Um, uh, that wouldn't look right for them to be getting money. The pastor's son getting a pastor uh, award, scholarship. That wouldn't look right. So we opted out, but we were still so. Then Dr. Dita decides she wants to go to school. And guess what? That was years later. And guess what? She got a full ride. A full ride. A re at uni Regent University that she did not even know. You apply when you sow the seed. <laughs> oh. 
you are applying for something. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. If you, if you want to give, give. If you don't, then okay. Enough of that. Um, I so had a wonderful week. Uh, make yourselves accountable. This is maturity uh, moment right here. There are some people who, quite frankly, are going to slip off or fall off because there's a level of accountability when you have to come into the building and you hear the word, but now you can't come into the building. So you really are going to have to surround yourself. You're going to have to have people to ask you. And you know, I've almost gotten to the point where I don't even like asking some partners, have they been watching? The responses I've been getting from people where I'm working, oh, I got to do this, oh, I got to do this. We come on too many times. I'm giving up myself too many times for you to tell me you're working where you can't get it. You, you just don't want it, but let me, let me caution you. Let me, let me stop pointing. Let me caution you. There's going to come a time when you're going to need God. You don't know how much you need him now, but you're going to need him. Okay, so, so be mature. Make yourselves accountable, all right? Um, let's look at some highlights from last week so we can get right into our lesson. And I, I need to jump right into where I've been trying to get for the last two or three weeks. I need to jump right into it. Uh, watch this. We'll be right back. What happened? We've been back already? Did, did we go to it? It didn't come up? I didn't see anything. Did you all see anything? Are we back up? They're having technical difficulties. Well, they can at least tell me I'm coming back up to you. Lord Jesus, I'm sitting here cussing Dr. Didi out. Big shout out to Hazel Hall. Hazel Hall, I love you. She is now for the third week my favorite, favorite viewer and partner, favorite, favorite one. No one has replaced her yet. I haven't seen anybody going off about I'm your favorite. So until somebody let me see that you're my favorite, then Hazel Hall is going to be my favorite. I'm your favorite. Oh, Pastor Rick, just, <laughs> Pastor Rick just said he's my favorite. Okay. Um, okay, Pastor Rick and Hazel Hall now. All right, so I got two favorites. Um, um, anyone else want to take me up on that? Just okay. All right, Snow, Snow, my favorite. Snow, my. You know, Snow haven't worked this entire quarantine. She just been <laughs> taking the Lord's money every month. Uh, okay, uh, I, I gotta stop playing. That's that's the problem with people coming in. Now. I I used to be focused. Okay, so uh, t let me know if we had the highlights. If we don't have the highlights, let me see then, let me see then if you have it. You remember the white cat and the black cat that were skating together? Let, let, let me see them, because I, I, I've been talking about this agape, and this agape is going to establish unity, and unity is going to establish something that this world has never seen. I'm not talking about in this world system, because that's going to get worse and worse. All right. But as it relates to the kingdom of God and that system, it's going to get better and better. I do have that one. OK, roll that. I just love this because I, I, I can skate. Hey, oh, uh, that's, that's, look, look at the footwork. Look at the footwork. Woo, boy, I'm doing uh, hey. how, do, how, do, how do you get that together? I mean, they had to spend time together. But the white boy got more swag than the black boy. Look at that. He's swaggy. Look how swaggy he is. Look like, ah, uh. Watch that move, uh. Woo. Come on, hey. Can they hear me over this? They can hear me over this? Y'all should have told me that. <laughs> Man, did you all see that? that that's, that's what we're after. And one of my sons, uh, well, he sent it to me, so if you send me something, it's subject to be shown. If you don't want me showing anybody, you better, you better, you better. You got to tell me, don't show anybody. 
But this is what happened in the streets of Washington, D.C. Roll, roll that next one for me. Do we have that next one? This is my son, C.J. Blair. Watch this and give him some sound. I need to hear. It. How does this? All right, we got a little bit of everybody out here. Yes, we, we got some liberals, we got some Democrats, we got some Republicans, yes. we got some Trump supporters, we got some brothers from the yes. hood, we got a little yes. bit of everything. Right? Yes, and one day we all one people. Yes. 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 Yes.
big shout out to CJ. He has become the lesson. And that's, that's just him, uh, guys. That was just him. Uh, uh, that was just him uh, as a representation of this entire ministry. Of course, I don't have your video footage. That doesn't mean you're not out there making it happen. I thought somebody's going to say amen. Yeah, obviously, you got to be out here making it happen. Wherever you come in contact with people, be that bridge over troubled water. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Be what God has called you to be. Put aside what you think about someone. Your, your fears have been drowned in his love. His perfect love has drowned your fear. Don't be concerned about rejection. I need you to be an agape ambassador. Let's go right now to 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. I want to dig right into this thing so we can spend some time here. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 1. Uh, I don't think I had anything else I had to throw up that I asked them about, did I? Huh? I never looked at Genesis 8.22 that I talked about. It. As long as the earth remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. Yeah, praise God. Yeah, cold and heat, winter and summer, night and day shall not cease. What are you trying to tell me? You got the highlight now? Okay, well, let's roll the highlight since they have it. Uh, they work hard around here, and y'all just be patient. If I can be patient... Because I'm an agape ambassador and we're going to talk a little bit about patience. Roll that. Roll it. Some of the stuff that you have been doing, I told you my objective here is to simply teach this at a level where it will cause a maturity to come upon you that will reveal your immaturity and allow you to see how petty you have been. People may believe that's how people who call themselves Christians are. You will walk in line with the gospel as long as there's no opposition. But the many adversity strength, you go back to the nature of the flesh. The 10 lepers stood afar off and said, Master, have mercy on us. That's when Jesus practiced social distancing and healing. He said, go show yourself to the priest. I ain't coming over to touch you, but I'll speak the word to you. I call you healed. I call you whole. I call you blessed. I call you walking in agape. Now, if you're going to talk about it, be about it. Just don't be new to this. Be true to this. All right. No wonder, no wonder they wanted to show their little stuff. I love it. Uh, you got 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. Let's look at that, please. 1 Corinthians. This maturity thing, man. And you, you know, the thing about this 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is that people read this at weddings. They, they talk about it. Most people know if you say 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, oh, that's the love chapter. Okay, it's not enough for you to quote the word. It is not what you quote. That's what's going to set you free. It's what you know. And not even to the point of just knowing it, but to the point where you are showing it. The Bible says study to show, study to show, study to show. It didn't just say study to know. It says study to show yourselves approved of God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, so as we approach this, uh, folks, listen to me. Please approach it with, with uh, new lenses. Please approach it. Help me, Dr. D. Please approach it with a, a different attitude, a new perspective. Don't, don't approach it like, I've heard this. Well, how much are you doing this? You know, because there are some characteristics. We're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, but there are some characteristics that are found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 that I know I'm not currently all together walking in. 
It's been my practice. As a matter of fact, Dr. Didi jumped on me sometime this week about something I did. I don't know what I did this time, but she jumped on me and I didn't respond in a certain kind of way. And then she's, oh, you got this agape thing running now. I said, you ghetto, just get on out my face when just trying to, you know, it's the people in your house that attempt you the most. When I'm trying to do good, the Bible said evil is always present. <laughs> but, but let's approach this. No, folks, come on. Let's not make this church again. Let's make this about really uh, uh, Aaron Gabe. Let's make this about an attitude that I want this word to penetrate, to infiltrate my life to the place where I become what I hear. Snow, if anybody needs to hear this lesson, it's you. Oh my God, you need love and to walk in love like never before. And I know, well, Snow, I'm going to see how she's going to act. If she don't walk in agape, then we know she's not getting my lesson. And nobody asked her to show up here today. You're here. <laughs> like Arissa, Arissa, same way. If anybody needs this lesson, it's her. Because, see, see, and why do you, why do you not like somebody picking you on pointing you out. You, you should point yourself out. No, no, my, my objective is to get you to look at you. You know, and, and, and thank you, because I know she has my heart, that's my daughter. And I got, I got some daughters who, who really love me, get upset with me. They still my daughters, whether they want me as their father anyway. I ain't changed because they got mad. They still my daughters, you understand, breathing. She got mad with me one day, whoo. Okay, let's move on. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, though I, well, listen to this, though I speak with, listen to me. I mean, I don't care how much you prophesy. I don't care how much you say, is that Pastor Henry right there? Pastor Henry, I, it doesn't even matter to me how eloquently people speak from here. When, when it gets down to the characteristics of, of this whole thing. I want to know who you are when you've been pushed. Yeah, absolutely. Not when you preach. Yeah, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not agape, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Let me see it in another translation. A message or easy or NIV or in, uh, in, in some, what is that message? If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't agape, I'm nothing but a creaking mm, of a rusty gate. You come. Yeah, what, what should we look at it in? Both, is this best? I, I, it's so many different. Let me see what the Amplifier has to say about this whole thing. Okay, you got the NLT. If I could speak all the languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't agape others, I would only be a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. Let, let, me, let me see it in the, the Amplifier, please. The Amplifier says, uh, if uh, I can speak, in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not agape, that reasoning, intentional spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for us and in us. Go on. Go on to the next. I'm only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. I mean, you can so sing, boy. You, you got all this stuff. You, you, you greet people at the door coming in. You, you usher. You, you, you all this stuff. Come on. Okay, okay, put me on one. Okay, let me, I'll stay with Amplify. Let's just stay with Amplify. Go to verse two. Because I didn't go over all of these. Let's just go to verse two. And if I have prophetic powers 
the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose and understand all the secret truths and, and mystery and possesses all knowledge. And, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but, but have not agape, God's love in me, I am nothing. I am a useless nobody. Now, won't you just listen to the word? This is the word. This is not Mike Freeman uh, rebuking someone or reproving. The Bible, God's word is saying you're nothing. You're nothing. You're, you're talking loud. Even if I dole out all that I have, I don't care how many motorcycles I've given away. I don't care how much seed I've sown. I don't care how many people we have put in houses. I don't care how many cars we've given away. And I want to give away some cars. I do. I want to give away some cars during this quarantine. I want the single partners of this. I'm not talking about for people who have cars. I'm talking about people who don't have cars, mainly single moms. Single moms, I want to somehow, and then, and then there's, some, there's some prerequisites to go along with this. There's going to be some requirements. You mean to tell me you want a car from here and you haven't considered giving a dime to this ministry? You, you don't want anything from anybody. You don't want anything. You just want handouts. And God ain't in the handouts. Are you here? He even wanted something from Jesus when he gave Jesus. He isn't just giving stuff away. He expected a return. It was a seed. And you don't want to sow a seed, but you want somebody always to give you something. You aren't going to get anything. I'm just going to tell you like it is. You aren't going to get anything because you're not being complicit with the order, the systemic righteousness, the laws of God. And you would rather me tell you this in love. I'm loving you right now. Whether you're feeling it, get, put the scripture back up because I may go back to it at any time. I dole out all these things. I, I'm a giver. Okay, so, but so what? Dee and I have made sure that people have gotten in the houses. I'm talking about personally. At our expense, it's, it's crazy. Some of the things that I've just deduced or reduced as it relates to someone else's coming up. Just wanted to see them come up and become high. And, 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 and people, people, people will, people will, people will, People will, I would give it say R. Kelly you, but I don't think that would be nice to say. Yeah, people, people will, <laughs> people will do things to you. And I said, maybe I shouldn't have. And maybe that wasn't a God thing. But you knew what I was talking about. People will misuse you. People will abuse, people, people will, people will get amnesia. And now if you don't know what I meant by what I just said, then just leave it alone. Don't be asking the people in your room, what do you mean by that R. Kelly thing? People, people will get stuff. I've watched it here in ministry. You talking about church hurt. People are talking about the worst hurt is church hurt. Oh, strawberry patch. <laughs> I mean, come on, get, get over it. Why didn't you have club hurt? Why didn't you have strip club hurt? Well, it comes to church. Ain't no hurt. Worse. Okay. I've been talked about, lied on, mistreated, talked about, I, you, you name it. It has come to Dr. Dede's in our door. I mean, here in what I consider this building. I don't consider this the house of God. This is not God's house. People say, well, uh, thank you for coming to, we welcome you into the house of the Lord. This is not the house of the Lord. Stop it, would you? Because you're deceiving yourself. You are just actually passing on or relinquishing the uh, responsibility of your walking the way you're supposed to walk in his house, his body. And when you get the revelation that you are his house, you'll stop putting it off to this place because there's certain things you wouldn't do in this building that you're doing in your body. Okay, so, so, I, so, so people have done all sorts of things to us. Okay, so what? Okay, you got agape. You got to move on. Let me move on. 
And if I surrender my body to be burned or in order that I may glory, but have not agape, God's love in me, I gain nothing. Okay, here we go, verse 4. Now, this is where the ten toes meet the turf, better known as the rubber meets the road. This, this is where, that's what, that's what CJ told me. He said, I got ten toes now. I said, yeah, what? That means I'm in the street doing what I'm supposed to do, walking it out. Ten toes in the street. Love and do, okay. Agape, okay. Agape endures long, and you're so short-tempered, you lose it in the lickety split. Okay, this is describing what you're supposed to be walking in. You are a love child, an agape child of an agape God, Jehovah. And if God is long and patient, give me, give me, give me, give, give me back to in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, KG, the New King James Version. You jump to six, go back to four. Love suffers long and is kind. We can stop right there, boy. Love is kind. Now, that doesn't mean you don't check anybody, but that don't mean you got to be nasty either. Woo, I could get nasty with my checking people. Woo, we used to go in the hotels. I travel, I get there, and Dr. D to go over to, and I got reservations. Let D spend about seven and a half seconds over there too long. I'm walking over there with my bad self. What's the problem here? And now Dr. Didi, here she go. Uh, baby, let me, let me have this. Go, go sit down. It's, it's going to be all right. I got you. No, 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 no. What's the problem here? She said, baby, would you please uh, go, go, go have a seat? I, don't we have reservations? Give me the reservation number. I, I gave it to him, Mike. Uh, and she looking at me like, who is this joker here? I ain't don't make any sense. Got reservation, got reservation. It's gonna take this long. Give me the keys. Look, I've been traveling. Didi will turn around. Give me one of these. Baby, we may have to minister to them one day. I'm like, no, let them go to hell. Just let them go. Just let them go there. I ain't gonna they ain't got my room. They ain't teach, Eric. They, <laughs> Eric say teach. <laughs> no, that was not right. Don't listen to Eric. <laughs> How do you act like that doesn't matter? I just pushed it to another level. Let them go to hell. I don't ever want that from anybody. But how are my actions? If I got to minister to them one day and I'm acting the fool now and she's letting me know I may have to minister to them and I still choose to act like that, what I'm saying, not out of my mouth, but out of my life, let them go to hell. Like you don't even care. See, altering your attitude or your disposition based upon how you may have to be the agent in the earth for somebody else's salvation, and you don't care how you are being received, you don't care how in that moment you are acting contrary to what you may have to share with somebody. So in the fact you have to share it to them, what's the impression that they, or do you think that they're going to have of you when you start talking this Jesus stuff. You just act a fool. Now, how impactful do you think you're going to be after you act the way you've act? Oh, man, I might well just, I might well just clear the room if y'all just going to sit here and look at me. Oh, is this hurting that bad? 
I would rather know there's no one in here than to have y'all in here and act like you don't hear what I'm saying. I, I know they're listening, but, but, but don't sit in here because I, I can hear from them opposed to having them here. Now, I don't want you to make up stuff, but at the same time, I, 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 want, you to, I want you to hear I, I want you. I want you to. I want you to respond to what you're hearing, because if you're sitting here, it's almost like talking to cars. I got to talk to cars the week after next in in in, in uh, Detroit, because it's an outdoor parking lot meeting, and at least the people in the cars can toot their horn. So my, I never said. Out of my mouth, let him go to hell. But I did say out of my response, I don't give a care. And the Bible says this agape is kind. And, and, and for some of us, we're not even kind to the people we live with. you more kind Mm. to your co-workers and supervisors and your clients and people you're trying to conduct business with, but you short when it comes to your own house. Shout facts or something, Aaron. Facts. Let's just stay right there. How kind are you? That's, that's one thing I loved about that Ellen when she closed her show. The times I would see it, Ellen closed the show and say, be kind to one another. Then we get a report that the whole thing is a hostile environment. I don't know what to believe, but I like to believe the fact that she's promoting kindness. What has happened to kindness? When, when are you going to set yourself? Okay, so let's think, let's think. I go home and ask let's think. I say, hey, mama, what did I talk about today? She's like, I knew you was going to ask me this. And I can't remember. I try to remember. Let's think. Hey, let think. You're going to remember love is kind. So the next time I ask you to do something, please, you, ooh, You'll know what I want you to remember by being kind this time. I was jumping on my father-in-law the other day. Jumping on my father-in-law. If I don't go any, get any further today with this lesson, what you should walk away with, I got to be kind. Because agape is kind, and you are an agape ambassador. I pushed my father-in-law to the level we out there. He walking the dog. The dog get out. The dog go under the fence. Them big old cane courses. They, ooh, and they got up to a man, one of my neighbors. I'm not even going to tell you which one. Them, them dogs, one of them, get your dog. Can you imagine you walking down the street and two big old dogs this big just come out from a gate? Lord, and you don't have your pistol. <clears throat> You don't have any spray. And the dog's just friendly. They just, but I don't know the dog friendly. So the dogs run back, and then my neighbor complained, called the animal people on me. The animal people came out and gave me a warning. But Dad Wooten was the one who let him out. And I get, I'm the one to get the warning. So I'm talking to him, man. Don't take the dog so close to the dog on fence, Dad. I tell you what, you walk the dog on dog. Then if you <clears throat> and I say, you took him too close. He said, I did not take him too close. I said, you, you did, Dad, because I see you out there. Why are you lying about it? He said, I'm not lying about it. I took the dog. And that dog saw the man from the street, and he took off running, chasing after the dog, chasing after the man. And I said, them dogs never run out there. Why are you lying? I said, you've been telling so many lies. Right? You know what he got? He said, he had so many. It was, so, it was just too much. He couldn't take it anymore. He said, I'll tell you what, it take one and no one. <laughs> 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 I 
Woo! He called the pastor, he called his pastor a liar. That was not kind. I don't know why all y'all laughing about that now. That is, that, that, that was so funny to me. Love is kind. So, okay, so we're not going to go any further with this right now. I, I'm, I'm going to stop right here. What you're going to work on this week for your life is kindness. Thank you. Thank you, PJ. That's good. You, you're going to work on kindness. You just, you just nasty. And, and you know you're nasty. And people have told you you're nasty. And some of you nasty, nice. You're the worst kind. You, you nice, nasty. You try to be polite about it, but you, you nasty. You got to come out of yourself. See, the word of God is the mirror that we look into that determines how we should be looking. We can't just say, oh, that's just me. No, 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 no. You are he in the earth. So you have to be replaced. You, you, no, you have to be replaced. And you got to be kind. Set yourselves. Mom, wouldn't you hear me, baby? This, today's lesson, I talked about your being kind. That's all you have to remember. Remember that throughout this week. You're going to have opportunities to not be kind. Now, being kind doesn't mean you don't, you don't correct things. But you can correct things kindly. Now, any of you all know people who are not kind? Do you see them when you look in the mirror? Okay. Okay, do you know people who are kind? There's something about kind people that there's a posture, there's a maturity that they are just set to be kind. That comes from the scripture, not just out of a personality. And that's what Mike Freeman is setting himself to be, kind. Kind. Because agape is kind. Well, give the Lord a shout, would you please? Give him a shout. And we're going to go through this. I can't wait to get to honor. There's some characteristics that we're going to go through. I talked about kindness today. We can expound on that, but you do it. Sit your family down this week. Look at the characteristic of kindness. What, what, how, how do you, how, how are you kind? What does kind define? What, how, how is that translated out of your life? This lesson is for Reggie Minor. He's here. Reggie Minor, he needs this lesson more than anybody in this room. And the whole church said, Oh, Snow said it louder than anybody else. I, hey, Dr. Miles, be kind. Hey, Conrad, be kind. Hey, Warren, Janine, I love you all. And I called you this week, and you didn't return my call. That, that wasn't kind. Be kind. I'm going to sign off. <clears throat> Remember these words. You, well, you got to be born again. You got to be filled with the Spirit. You got to allow me to be your pastor wherever you are. We have now established E-Church so I can have partners that attend Spirit of Faith Christian Center all over the world. Contact me at michael.freeman uh, michael .freeman at sofcc.org. It's going to go up on the screen in three, two, one. Bam. Okay. All right. Let's try it again. In three, two, one. Watch this. Bam. Okay. And three, two, one. No, come back to me. I didn't tell you to go to her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just told on kindness. Remember these words found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 7. 
for we walk by faith. And it takes faith to be kind, not by sight. No doubt about it. Now, throw it to uh, Minister Teresa. See you. Wow, wow, wow. What a word. Love is kind. Be the lesson. Take time out this week to listen to this lesson again. Get it in your heart. Listen, love is kind. L this is what I know. When you create a moment, you earn a memory. So create a course of action around being kind, define it, and walk in it. Remember, right after our time together, prayer line will be open for 30 minutes. Prayer intercessors are waiting for you. 301-843-9733. Have a kind and wonderful week. We love you. Oh, come on, you say it. It's time to go higher. Let's go. Put your Let's go. Let, 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 let. This ain't nothing but a